What's up, everybody? I'm Dear Gamer. Welcome back to the channel today. Today, we're back, and today we are talking about Monster Hunter Wilds. It is a little bit of shy over two months away. At the release announcement in December, they were like, hey, hold on to your shorts. In June, summertime, we're going to release some more information on Monster Hunter Wilds. I'm expecting it to release early next year, like they did with Monster Hunter World back in the day. But today, we're going to be having some healthy speculation. As we get closer and closer and closer, it's time to put all of our crazy ideas together. And from all the things we experienced from Monster in the World, Monster in the Rise, Dragon Dogma, um, Extra Primal, I feel like those are four important games that are going to contribute to what we're going to experience in Monster Hunter Wilds. So today, we're going to talk about that. So fan, without further ado, let's dive in. First thing I want to say is Guiding Lands. I feel that the Guiding Lands is what Monster Hunter Wilds are going to be. I doubt there's going to be a hub system or if there is there might be a small hub system but i feel like the worlds are going to be interlooped just like the different biomes are going to be in the guiding land because if you notice i would imagine that they would not just make a expansive system like this and just simply forget about it in their game i felt that they were testing it out to see what is it like what's multiplayer like down here and how can we have a riveting gameplay experience while expand our game even further so i feel that the guy is the perfect example of what the world is going to look like uh, just on a grand, gr um, on a on a grander scale another example of a game that i feel that's going to give us a really good indication of what their open world is going to be is honestly monster hunter stories too that was a good opportunity for us to one see what it's like when they have an open world experience because at that point Dang, he ran away quick. We didn't have Dragon Dogma 2, which is Capcom's second open world game. So all we had was the Monster Hunter stories. I feel they did a pretty good job introducing the stories, the world, being able to see the monster in the wild is what I feel they really want to make the Monster Hunter experience come to life. I know for the last, since the beginning, Monster Hunter has been a hub based game. And when we, what we saw with Dragon Dogma is they kept what they used in the previous games, but at the same time, let me enhance what they had in terms of their formula. So with this, we had Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise was a good opportunity for us to see what does faster gameplay look like? What does more, more mobility look like? I know some people love it, some people hate it, but overall, me had a positive experience with the game. So Monster Hunter Rise, what did that give us? It gave us really good gameplay. I think for them to flush out what the gameplay loop is going to look like, that's where Monster Hunter Rise came in. I feel where Monster Hunter World is the story, the presentation, the graphics. Monster Hunter World is the whole package. It's 100% whole package. And this game came out in 2016 and it's still enjoyed by millions of people today. And I still get comments on my videos of people saying, hey, I just started this game. Thanks for the videos or asking questions because it's such a refined game. And there's been word that it's going to be Capcom's biggest game they've ever made. And I believe that, and I think when they say that, I mean, I think they mean in terms of scale, how big the game was. So we saw what it did with Dragon Dogma, not bad. The world was a decent size. The world was fine. It was, I mean, the one thing they're gonna do is they're gonna have fast travel. They're not gonna leave it like what Dragon Dogma was. It was big, it was connected, and it felt alive. I feel one thing that's really, really important with Monster Hunter that I feel like a lot of people really didn't realize they missed until they experienced it rise was Monster Hunter felt alive. There's a lot of things going on. There is life, there's little monsters, other monsters around. It feels alive. So I feel that that's one thing they're really gonna really capitalize on with this next game. But my first point is Guiding Lands. The game is going to be like the Guiding Lands because it just makes sense. And like, why would they make this big old system and not utilize it in the future and just expand on it and make it even better? The well, second point was the gameplay. Monster on the Rise. That was the opportunity for them to take the gameplay from World, but take it to the next level and see what they can really do to push it. And also, too, the augmentation, the builds. We had so many options. And I feel like sometimes we had way too many options in Monster Hunter Rise when it came to builds. But it came to the point where everything was viable, regardless of how you wanted to play. And I think that's what a good thing was. Unlike Monster Hunter World, where 
they release like maybe a couple of builds you can go for like meta in monster hunter rise there was a ton of ways you can play ton of builds you can do that really capitalize on the doing really really good damage and really exciting gameplay so that's monster hunter world guiding lands that's how we're that's that's the first thing second thing the gameplay from monster hunter rise they're gonna take that next thing is gonna be exo primal Ex interesting enough why exo primal because exo primal was capcom's first game that made us use the capcom id which i feel is important now i feel bad my boy goddamn which is important for what is it guess below crossplay and it, you have to you have to have crossplay in this next monster hunter game because that is what's gonna take the monster hunter franchise to the next level so many times people are like hey dg can we play together we play together we can't because we're limited to our consoles so i feel that capcom already has multiplayer i mean cross-platform with street fighter with pc and and playstation even that even this PlayStation and PC would be a step in the right direction and a breath of fresh air, allowing us to play with our boys and girls from different platforms. So I'm hoping that what they use Exo Primal as a beta test to flush out the system, see how it works and you know, figure out all the, the good and the bad so that when it introduces in monster in the world we have those juicy lobbies i want the lobbies of 32 people i want to be able to see another hunter just chilling flying him riding around on his palamu and i can just join him or continue about my way in my game dragon dogma where does dragon dogma come into the mix i feel that it was a good test of the re engine the graphic graphic the graphic throughput of it it also helped them realize that, like, ooh, hold on. We might want to make sure we flush things out a little bit before we release the next one, Monster in the Wild, because Dragon Dogma has some performance opportunity. There's no way around it. On PC, I, was, I mean, for me, it depends on your system. For me, my PC, I got a 4090 and a 3900X, so it ran good for me. But for people that don't have the same system, they had a lot of opportunity. So I feel that that was a good, like, ooh, we gotta make sure that we tighten things up a little bit so that it's a pleasant experience for everyone playing the game and you have to worry about opportunities with gameplay. And it's kind of interesting that you say that because, for example, this game, I'm playing it on a PS5 and this game is 4K60 and it runs flawlessly. On PS4, it was 4K30. So I feel that, I mean, the graphics look good for a game that came out six years ago. I can't imagine what they're going to do to make it even better on the next one. But I can't imagine it being, having an opportunity with performance unless, unless the game is 100, like I was saying earlier, like the Guided Lands, you got to render the world, you got to render the monsters, you got to render all the little creatures happening, and you got to render the plays at the same time. So that could make it the game an opportunity where it comes to performance. And I feel like that's one thing they're really gonna make sure they spend their time in flushing out. So that was a good test of the system to see what it can really do. And I feel like we saw that with Dragon Dogma. And also too, Capcom was quick to address any kind of opportunities that we're experiencing with the game. They're quick to put out a patch. So I'm interested to see what they do with that one. Other things that are going to be a topic of discussion, microtransactions. Microtransactions have been in Monster Hunter games for a long time. And they have cosmetics in Monster Hunter World and in Monster Hunter Rise. So I just, I'm just curious to see. I think they're going to do the same thing. Oh, too early. I think they're going to do the same thing. And it's going to be all like late armor. This isn't the kind of game where you can like get, you can't get armor you can't get like oh i mean a long sword Just give me this this monster's long sword oh my goodness i came with no heels i didn't come prepared but this is the game where you can get like oh here's money to buy things because we'll just we'll, i don't know it doesn't really make sense in this game cosmetics is what typically have been um microtransactions and i think in monster hunter rise when they came out with their layered weapons that were 
doper than the one piece beginning game and those were microtransactions a lot of people are pissed off about that so i i don't know it's interesting time capcom has been in the heat with dragon dogma so i can imagine that are like whoo let's really back let's really back a little bit in terms of what we do with our microtransactions and let's focus on just making a good game so for me those are my things that i feel that are going to let us know what Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Hunter Wild is gonna be like. I'm curious. What are your guys' thoughts? What are some things you agree with, you disagree with? What's the speculation? What have you heard in the wild? I kind of want this video to be a place for people to come out and share the crazy things that they've heard along the, in the internet, so that we can all kind of have a good time laughing about it and talking about it. But all in all, I think we're all just super excited for Monster Hunter, the next one to come out. So. Any kind of content or information that gets the body stimulated, we're all about it. But I think that's about my points I wanted to make. Um, Monster Hunter stories for the world. The, I mean, Monster Hunter Dragon Dogma, not just for the, the RE engine, but also for storytelling. That was a game that was story-based. You had, you had missions available to you. So it's gonna be interesting to see like how they put that into the mix as far as like story presentation. I felt like World did it well. I didn't like Hi Hawk. How dare you? I didn't like how Monster Hunter Rise had it, the story presentation. Even though you don't play Monster Hunter for story, I, I just didn't like what they did. So if they keep what Monster Hunter World did and make it even better, that'd be dope. I can't as far as monsters they put in the game. I want to see a lot of new monsters. I think our classic, you know, like Rathalos, Raja, Gigante. I want Primordial Malzino in there. I want Shugaru Magla, the Risen version. That dude was a beast in Monster Hunter Rise. I, oh my God, I think it's another video I want to say. Actually, I think that's another video I want to make. <laughs> the tier list of end game monsters. That's a great idea. Between Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise. Because I'm, I mean, I'm curious to see what you guys think. Because look, Monster Hunter Rise has some bangers. I mean, world has Fatalis. Come on, bro. World has Fatalis, but come on, you can't you can't deny the heat that Rise brought. But that's it. Right now we're just now we're just fighting the monster, having a good time. I think you guys are hanging out, supporting. I haven't fought this dude in literally a century, so this good to see. Also, too, I want to see them bring out like a lot more. Like, I like the temper thing. Uh, some people call it lazy, the tempered monsters. But I like it. I like when they bring harder monsters. I like the risen thing. I kind of want them to do a little more of that stuff. The arc, arc temper. That's cool too. They went super hard with Valky in this game. Damn, I'm destroying this boy. God damn. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jace, Jace. Say, get the head, get the head. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. We haven't touched the long sword in months. We still got it, baby. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. What's happening here? Let's get him tenderized, get him juicy. But also too, I feel like, I, I, you know, I forgot. I started Generations and I never went back to it. I gotta see my Switch, so I got it. Then maybe we might do some more of that. But right now, we got Stellar Blade coming out. We're checking that out. We have No Rest of the Wicked. We're going to be checking that out. Then also, too, we have, of course, Elden Ring DLC coming out. We're going to be checking that out as well. But now I'm just going to finish this fight. Because now, I'll, at first, I was just chilling. Now, ooh, that was a thumbnail right there. <sighs> that is thumbnail. Oh, take it, take it. Now I'm, like, invested. Mmm. Oh, stop it. Move. Come back. Let me get that charged up. Oh, and that flame. Hey, boy, take it easy. Get that. Stop. Ooh. See, the problem with that one, he based me out because I can't get my force out afterwards. Damn. Oh, yo, why is he playing the zone for? Stop being a weenie, bro. Get in here. He was big and bad the first part of the fight, and now all of a sudden he's playing scared. Come here. Okay, now he's chilling. He's tired. He's dehydrated. He's some water. 
I'm gonna water for it. I got nothing but these lefts and rights. Oh, that would take too long. Damn, that got me. I, I'm, I'm, I got the time mixed up. Stay, stay. Oh, right there. Yes. <laughs> this tail is mine. If you didn't know, this boy is a true, the true longsword master. Uh oh. Stay, stay, stay. Take it, take it, take it. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Woo! It's over. Oh, poor boy. Poor boy. Before it goes, before it goes. Oh, no, he broke my ankles. He literally broke my ankles. Okay, hold on. He might stay right here. He might stay. He did. Okay, let me get that. Let me get that crispy one. Woo! I have to end it. I have to end the anime. Oh, I gotta hit the anime finish. Oh no, we didn't go down. Hey, how much health does this boy have? Oh no. Before he escapes. Get, 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 get out of him. What the hell is happening? Oh my god. And I guess the head and turn him around. Let me try, let me try, let me try. Oh. Of course he escaped through the top. Oh, speaking of the boy right there, Rajan. Hold on, let's finish this real quick. Let's finish this. I think that's what this this is the beauty of the guiding land. I think the guiding lands was was good. I feel like execution was bad. Because like just being able to just kinda hang out and just chill in here and just fight monster to monster to monster without spawning them, that's dope. I think the reward system in the guiding land was jacked up. That's why no one played it. You got good master rank points here, but you didn't get good um decos here so like no one played it and this game you want to get your decos going so like you can't get those good decos then you're not gonna spend any time down here so i feel like that was a poor execution when it came to the guiding lands but also but i think in theory it was a good good thought out location for end game stop that oh my god the goddamn trouble but anyways we came we talked about what we wanted to talk about now we're just having fun playing the game i can always play this game forever but ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Till next time, Tier Gamer, signing out.